Might as well be episode one. For the first time in our history at the Too Thick Pod, we had to stop, (laughs) delete, and start over. And I'm very critical of self, but that was a fantastic, phenomenal, top-of-the-line intro with no stuttering, no stammering. It was clean, crisp, precise. It tickled the senses. It had you on the edge of your seat. I kicked it over to Manny, and I can't even repeat the words that came out of this damn damn man's mouth. You see, now I am flustered. We are rated XXXXX. We are not for the children. We are not for anybody. The best, absolute best intros of all time. And our son, who I gave a very complimentary welcome to, said words that cannot ever even be repeated (laughs) cannot ever be repeated never 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 (laughs) i put my head down in disgust i was morally ethically opposed to what came out of this young man's mouth (laughs) but being the leader that i am i'm going to rally but i'm going to tell you that was like a gut punch i was operating at a 15 now i'm at like a three or four so as the trooper that I am, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to bring the energy, but man, I came out like a flying rocket only for Manny to absolutely <laughs> butcher it. So welcome to episode 1.0 of the Too Thick Pod, your home for all things sports, cards, and levity. I am Jeremy, joined as always by my disappointing, <laughs> underachieving, underwhelming, thoughtless prick of a child, Manny. I'm going to give it to you now to think before you talk, Manny. Good evening. What's up, Thickalos? And we're back. Tummy sweats and meaty sticks are back in action. I'm excited. This is the first episode in a while where I just get to talk to my big bro, Jeremy. I'm pumped. You're pumped. We're making moves. We're making money. I'm not losing money. And we're here. It's been a good day. I screwed up. We we, we rinse and repeat. Not repeat. We rinse and good move along. You know something, brother? Sometimes the Thickalos make mistakes, brother. And sometimes you just got to rally the troops, brother. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Dude, I cut an awesome, awesome Stone Cold intro. It came out of nowhere. Wasn't premeditated. It was just fantastic. And, Manny, you will agree. You dropped the ball harder than the ball has ever been dropped. Yeah. I did. I, I did drop the ball, like, really bad. Like, that was the this best is, thing you've ever done. Yeah, this is missing, uh, like, a, a wide-open layup. This is Chris Webber calling timeouts when there are timeouts. This is the worst things that have humanity. This ranks right up there with them. And I'm disappointed because all the Thickalos out there, all of the Too Thick fam are going to miss out on something that no doubt they would have paused. They would have had a side ache from – laughing so hard they would have had little snap bubbles and tears running down the sides of their face they would have rewinded it 14 times our views would have gone from 750 per episode to 2.4 based yeah. on that intro alone yeah <laughs> and i i screwed it up i got I, I dropped the ball i was excited you gave me the che- you were, you brought energy and i tried to bring the same amount of energy and it didn't come out good I I have to give you A for effort because you did try matching it because you've been up for 82 hours trying to get the fine people of Michigan their power back. And so I applaud you and your teammates for the work that you're doing. Um, You're running on Mountain Dew, Red Bull, and Jolt, and you are just trying to stay alive. But I I do appreciate the energy that you came with, although it was misdirected. It was awful and terrible. Uh, I know your heart was in a great spot. Yeah, 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 it was, it was. It definitely was. I was trying to bring the heat, 
and I got burnt. I'm just going to say it. I tried to bring the heat and got burnt. <laughs> you fucked around in the kitchen and you got burnt, but that's okay because your tummy sweats and that's what tummy sweats does. <laughs> Yeah. Your tummy sweats. I, no, I am tummy sweats. Your meat sticks. Yeah, your tummy sweats. And then, as you said, meaty sticks. Yeah. So it's your boy, meat sticks. Back with your boy, tummy sweats, to talk about all things cards. And one thing that I thought you were going to touch on that you didn't, but I think I think it was implied, is the hobby for us. And I'm mindful there's people going through stuff. The hobby specifically for Jeremy, Manny, Reckless Fam, the Manny being Manny 1.0 fam. It's Cali, baby. Has been an absolute blast this yeah. year. It has. It has. Um, Courtney's being able to go to all these shows. She's enjoying it. We have us two that's holding down the fort um, in the mid 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 Midwest shows. Mid 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 Midwest shows. Um, we're going to ship Shawana this week. We had a good show last weekend. Um, we're buying. We're selling. My wife's happy because I'm not losing all my money, so we're good. Yeah, man, we are holding down the murder mitten. We're out there whining and dining, shaking hands, kissing babies, networking, meeting some incredible people. And at the end of the day, when you're you're spending that time with folks, having a good time, it's it's crazy to think that little pieces of cardboard are what brought us all together. Exactly. If if it wasn't for me buying, you know, base cards in 2020. Second year base card Lucas thinking that they were gonna go to the moon. I would have never met you. So I I, I lost that, but I actually won in the long term. So I'm a big believer that you actually learn through adversity and challenges. If everything's easy and you never had to work for it, you never learn and you're not better for it. And so we've had a lot of episodes lately where we've been interviewing people or have been doing show recaps, which I absolutely love. But I figured we'd have a, a show. We agreed that, like, let's just talk about what's going on in our collections, what kind of moves we're making, what successes we're having, what trials and tribulations. And so I thought, like, hey, man, let's get on tonight. Let's, if it goes seven hours, if it goes 20 minutes, let's give a people an update what's going on with our with our PCs and our collections. I 100% agree. Um, let's start. You want to start with the, the app you're using recently that you have been getting a lot of success with? lately that a lot of people probably don't hasn't heard about it but it is catching steam and you'll hear about it here like i think in recent months it's gonna pick up yeah so last year at national we were at the the um the collectible after party right and we started hearing rumors and rumblings about these platforms coming out that were essentially going to be a third party where you ship your cards to and they act like a a a middleman so you can conduct trade safely so uh, maybe three, four weeks ago, I was browsing and I saw this, this thing on Instagram called Veriswap. So I checked it out. I'm like, okay, that seems cool. And I'm like, one day I had a little bit of time. I'm like, I'm going to try it. So I went to lo- log a card in thinking like, okay, this is going to be a cumbersome process. And the last thing I want to do is, is, is load another card or track more stuff. Like I'm trying to get away from that. And it was legitimately enter your cert number it populates more often than not. If it's a pretty liquid card, pictures pop up. You don't even have to scan a picture, but it's cert number. It has to be graded front and back pick. And then you assign a value to it. And then you're in this marketplace and you can go on and you can search for players. You can search by the user, what their preferences are, and you can propose trades anonymously. And there's also a chat feature. So you can say, Hey, this is my initial offer, but if there's cash or whatever, you can do a cash ad. And so what I've been able to do, I've executed three trades and I've been able to essentially take, and I don't, I'm going to, I'm just going to use layman's terms, but I am not talking bad about anybody's collection. I want to be clear about that. But I basically took a handful of cards that didn't mean anything to me and turned them into a few bigger cards that I like and, or I feel are going to be easier to move based on where I'm at and the shows I'm going. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually put some cards in there, um, and <laughs> I need to change the price because I have stuff that's not, like, doesn't have any recent sales. So I looked at some of the recent, like, comparable sales, put them at that. Haven't had hits, but I'm going to lower it. The only trade offers I've gotten are from Jeremy, and he offers me, you know, no cards for my cards. And I, I know it's Jeremy because he does it, like, every other day. Um, and, and then he'll try to play dumb when I'm like, 
<laughs> at first I had no idea. I would text Jeremy like, are you getting these guys just trying to like, you know, have me accidentally <laughs> yep. because I keep getting these random trades. Like it's fantasy football, you know, the fantasy football where you're like, I want, you know, the best player for like nothing. And I hope you hit accept. That's what I was getting. And it was, it came out. It was all Jeremy just sending me trades. Every day. <laughs> I really did. I put, um, he would, I would like, I would ask for like $4,000 worth of Manny's cards and I propose a card that's like 20 bucks. Yeah, exactly. I was like, <laughs> I think I sent you a card and I was like, do you look at this card that someone's trying to trade me? And you laugh and you're like, that's just, it's my card. <laughs> I was cracking up because it's pretty cool. Like it sends you a text message, you get an email. So, if, oh, and they, and then also if you have push notifications enabled, so you find out really quick when people are like accept your deal or counter. And so I was just, I was having a blast with it because I'm like, as I get into the app, then like my brain's like, well, how do I best use the app? There's got to be a way. I can't just be like everybody else. There's got to be a way to, to work the app and, you know, like really ride it and see what you can do with it. And so I was able to find that um, updating your inventory and then posting in the feed, just letting people know that you're, you're down to make a deal. And so I say that, Manny, and it might be something that you could try is you post once in a while. I think people sometimes get discouraged because at the time, and there's a lot more users than there were a few weeks ago, nothing sucks more than putting a, a, a deal out there and then not hearing back. So I found like engaging with the people who are currently live or at least are making an effort, they're clearly motivated to make deals. And so I was able to do that, man. And so um, I, I would suggest if you have a bunch of cards laying around, throw it up there, tinker with it. Now, one catch, one catch, and I, I hope they adjust it. Um, and I will say, shameless plug for Hobby Night School, we interviewed the folks with Veriswap, and I felt like I did a damn good job, like, because I was able to speak to their product in depth. I feel like I should be on the marketing team for them. <laughs> uh, and so that'll be dropping on Hobby Night School whenever Courtney deems it worthy to be dropped. Mm-hmm. Is your first deal is only a dollar. So you pay to have the card shipped there. When they get there, they cover the shipping to the end user. So I was like, oh, this is sweet. This is sweet, sweet, sweet. And so my first deal was a Sadiq Bay gold Pulsar out of 10. I picked it up on Discord for 140 bucks. I had it up there, and because it was a, no, it was a pop one, no sales of anything out there, I put a value on it of 500 bucks, right? thinking that I'm going to get whatever. And I got a legitimate offer. I got a Josh Allen rookie silver PSA 9 and a Zion Williamson PSA 9. Both at the time, the comps were at like 250 to 300. And I was like, bet. Clicked it. $1. I paid for it to get shipped there. Bingo, bingo. Mm -hmm. Couple, you know, within about a week, I had those two cards there. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is golden. Mm-hmm. So then I made a couple other deals where I packaged like 15 to 20, you know, 50 to $150 cards and traded into a Jason Tatum Kaboom, PSA 10. Mm-hmm. And then I was also to take some Kobe White, mm-hmm. the deal that I absolutely crushed, where it was all upside. And I, I just posted today on the Instagram where I got like three UFC cards, I, or two UFC cards. I got a, a, sugar, a sugar Sean O'Malley out of 10, PSA 10. Yep, I got a Patty the Batty Spectra rookie out of 49 PSA 10. And then I got a Jalen Suggs Noir PSA 9 gold out of 10, pop one, none higher for this Kobe White card that I just had chilling. So I've been very active. I've probably proposed 60 trades mm-hmm. and I have executed three now. Now I will say there's a lot that I have turned down just because I need inventory for shows, which kind of kind of sucks and so you want to be mindful that you're going to be without those two those cards for like a week week and a half but the thing i want to warn people on is there is a fee of not one not two but three percent when you execute the deal so if if i'm saying my card's worth ten thousand and your card's worth ten and you're saying yours is worth ten thousand we do a deal we're each paying three percent on the 20 g's so that can get really really expensive so I'm interested to see how that plays. You have to make it worth somebody's while to offset that cost if you're doing like a $5,000 deal because if you're already playing with slim margins, it's just something to be mindful of. 
So, so what you brought up, I'm, I'm going to bring in like, cause I know the answer, but I know some people may ask, um, trading. So you send it to their, it's a, they're a middleman for, for the trade. So it's not going to the person you trade it to. Um, yes, it's secured. Okay. And secondly, um, you could put any comp that you want. Is that correct? So, that is correct. So putting a higher cost on the card when it's not like reasonable, right? Connect. It's, yeah, it's foolish. And so what I'm seeing is, is we're in there. You can tell who's new on there. And mm-hmm. please, excuse, please excuse the dog. I've got sleeping babies, and so uh, they're they're down with me. Yep. Uh, you've got the people who are trying to just like totally maximize their ROI as if. You and I don't know how to use card ladder or 130 point or alt and like determine a value. So it's almost like if you can utilize the chat function too, I think there's the opportunity to be like, hey, why don't we get our, we're agreed in the deal. Why don't we bring our values down to truly where they're at if they're out of whack and both save you and I some money? Yep. I, I 100%. Because that's the only way to really save money on that app. Because it, it is crazy because you could put whatever you want. It'd be cool to have like a funk. I don't know if they would ever do it because it's kind of hard, but have a function where you have to put the price of the card, like of recent sales around yeah. around a percentage. Yeah, Raymond uh, introduced a new feature that next to it, there's a direct link to eBay. So you can check the comp via eBay. So mm-hmm. I, I do expect people to, to um, you know, start utilizing that more. Now, the cool thing is it's totally anonymous. You don't know who you're dealing with on the other end. So if you're introverted or you're socially awkward or you're just uncomfortable having those conversations, it's sweet. And then if you decline a deal or counter a deal, it just gives you like six options to choose from. Like cards, I don't like the cards. I don't like the product. The comps are off. Like I forget what they are. So it's it's pretty sweet. Like if you're like, hey, I've got a bunch of cards. I'm not sure what to do with it. Well, there, there's a lot of people on there looking to trade down too. So I think that's it's, you can go up or down. And maybe move some inventory that's just sitting, not doing anything for you. I like it. I like it. When you told me about it, I put my cards up there. Um, I'm going to lower mine um, just because I want to do a trade. I want to trade down, get some inventory like you. So if you see some of my cards that you see me post on uh, Instagram and see them, offer trades. I want to do some. Let's go, man. Let's go. I'm telling you. And then just update it. And then just go in the feed one day. And I, I did that one time. I'm just like, hey, I'm looking to move this player. I'm looking to move into this and this. And I also, where, where you know, it might work for you is like you could search for people who are looking for Mbappe. And it breaks it down. It'll show you all the people. And then you just take your time and go through and like, okay, ooh, he's got some stuff that I like. Ooh, he's got some stuff that I like. I like that. I'm going to do that play after this recording, actually, see what I could get done. Same with my Neymar 101. Um, I'm- so enough about me. Yeah. How about you? What's going on with you, man? I'm actually having a like blast with TCG cards. I, I'm making so many friends from people across the world right now. Um, I'm watching breaks from uh, Hong Kong, actually. And they were breaking Marvel packs, right? These Marvel packs. And they look like movie title, like the poster packs. There's two cards per pack. And out of the case, so there's 30 boxes for one case. Um was around a thousand dollars, which you might think is a lot, but if you think about sports cards, a hobby box is around that price. So I got a whole sure. case, yeah, for the price of a hobby box. And within that case, you get four big hits. They're gold stamp cards. Um, so I got it. My first time actually enjoying ripping because I liked all the Marvel movies. I'm pulling them I'm like sweet, sweet. My gold stamps. I got Doctor Strange. I got um. Ant Man, and I got two other ones. Where were they? Um, Thanos. It's his symbol on um, Thanos. I don't know if you. I don't know if you've ever watched that movie, but um, Thanos was like the main villain that snapped his fingers, and half the people population went away. Um, and lastly, I got Endgame, which is one of the most popular movies in Marvel. The raw card of that sells for like three hundred dollars. Um, so I sent those in to get graded, and hopefully those come back black label. But I also in the meantime was able to sell my full sets um there's a 30 card set and I, when you open a case i got i ended up with five sets so i got five hundred dollars half of my money back by selling the base cards and you never get that with sports cards so i'm like in a new world and i love it to be honest so what is it about the cards that makes it appealing so i think for me 
even though I'm not into like comic books and stuff like that, I've never said like I just don't watch those kinds of movies. Mm-hmm. When you look at the cards, I can appreciate the art. I can appreciate like the the sparkleness. There is a lot going on there. So what is it about making you know? So when I opened it, because we ripped Dragon Ball Z prior to the Chicago show. Yep. It was a fun rip because I don't know what any of the cards are, so I just take the time to admire it. And then there's afterwards, like, a child, like, looking it up and being like, is this a good card or is this a bad card? Yeah. So, like, the reason why I like it is the art. Like you said, the art. The colors on it, you could just tell they it meant more. Um, This is the one. So, these are the base cards. There's not the actual foil. Um, But mine had, like, a stamp with his with his glove right here. So that I that was one of my hits. And I have every movie. Here's Ragnarok. I think I showed you that one. You got Iron Man. Um and these are like the movie posters. Like a lot of these are like exact look at I don't know Black Panther. There's I don't know. I really enjoyed it because I watched the movies. That's and dope. Iron Man and Captain America, the Civil War where they fought. So so I think it's important if you're listening to this, um, you know, Manny ventured out of something. He spent a lot of time, energy, and effort learning about the product and then having a game plan of what he was going to do with it. And that was get the case, rip it, get rid of everything that he didn't want to keep, you mm-hmm. know, attempt to be as first to market as humanly possible and then get the stuff graded. And what's impressive to me is he actually followed through with all of it. And, that, and that's not that's not a slight or a diff. It's very complimentary because that it does take a little bit of effort. But now those cards have already been gone for, what, a week, week and a half? Yeah, yeah. Uh, since the beginning of February, actually. I'm still waiting on a – hopefully they're coming soon, sooner than later. Um, but, yeah, if you – I'm trying to do the bro name method where you're first to the market. And I'm starting to realize that I am actually – becoming one of the first to market trees our friend trees was opening the case today and asked me to jump on to basically give him some information about these marvel cards um and then there's another product we didn't get into this and you you actually saw me rip this and it's from uh china it's disney 100 by phantom and there's four thousand i only four thousand cases made and there's the box um it comes 12 boxes per case each case has two like Chinese Zodiac cards and an auto, I believe. So you get like three hits, three to four hits per that case. Um, when you bought it at first, it's like around 150 bucks. They shot up already. So I was me, Courtney actually were getting them at that around that price. I was getting them around that price. We got them. We ripped them at the show. I pulled the Woody auto and I was pumped because that was my, uh, childhood hero i would uh i dressed with his hoodie for, or woody for like five straight halloweens uh so i was pumped when i got him and the reason why i liked it so much is because it had disney characters but my daughter was next to me getting excited by seeing the disney characters if you if you haven't seen the video go watch it you could just hear her repeating when she saw the character she wanted and she wanted courtney to sleeve it and protect it so she could keep it so now my daughter's into cards off that one product. Yeah, I think it's super like first off, the you ripping that with your daughter, like that tugs at the heartstrings. And I think that <laughs> is just fantastic. And it was just adorable to see. But also it was like it was a cool rip because it's nostalgic for you too, because most of us had some sort of experience with Disney movies growing mm-hmm. up. You know, whether you watched them or a lot or not, you're kind of familiar with what some of the stuff is. So you got the first pick of the box, <laughs> and when you pulled the Woody auto. I think there was a sense of like insane and pure happiness for you, yeah. which is awesome. Which I, if if one of us is going to win, I'd much prefer it be be you. Mm-hmm. So I, but also the realization of if there's only three hits per case, what are the odds that there's anything left? And so Courtney ripped the box and she got the the Chinese Zodiac, yep. which is a big time hit, plus some other stuff. Now I'll tell you what we did: every single card that we didn't sell that day at the show is posted on eBay already up for sale in the messages that we've gotten from people saying, Hey, this is so cool. Thank you for putting these. I've been looking for these. 
And it's, it's pretty, that's pretty neat. You know, it's always cool to get a good message from somebody, but just like you, we collectively took all of our hits already sent it into grading. We just so happened that TNT was there. We're like, Hey, take our cards, go get them graded. Hurry up, get them back to me. (laughs) Exactly. So yeah, we were, we're lucky that we built relationships like that because Kenny shout out to Kenny. He stayed there so we could rip the case and, or the boxes and, he didn't have to do that. He he knew I wanted to rip it with my daughter, so I was waiting for her to get there. Um, so he went to eat, come came back, and waited for us basically to rip it so he could take the hits for us. I, sir, one thing I will correct you is not at all lucky. We're, we're definitely fortunate, but you know this is years of putting in effort, treating people, going to shows, you know, building a name for yourself. So there is some work that goes into it. It's not just like we showed up one day and the world revolves around us because that's not at all. But I will say, at the price point, super fun to rip. And unlike sports cards, you get rid of the stuff right away. You've made a good portion of your money back. Now let the grading gods be with us. Yeah. A couple of good grades. And next thing you know, you're, you're in the green as opposed to being stuck with a bunch of cards and being in the red. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me because I see all these guys that are in girls that have been um, in the game since I was a kid. Right. And they said back in the day, you're able to rip a case, make flip, flip the base, flip the cards and make your money back. Now you can't even like you when you open a box, you know, you're not getting your money back for sports cards. Well, TCG just reminds me of like how it was back in like the 90s where you could rip it and get your money back. So I'm enjoying it. There's an anime coming out a uh, new case where it's like it's a case and it's 700 bucks like you can't beat that you, what are you buying for 700 you're buying obs, ob, around obsidian right where you get six cards yep and i'm getting a whole case and a couple hits yeah and, and it's a it's a like we said it's a fun rip like i am i don't watch comic book movies I've, I've, i don't think i've ever seen any besides maybe like the old batman movies like mm-hmm. I've never seen Spider. I've like, I just I'm just not into it. I don't find it cool. I don't find it appealing. I'm not yep. I'm, I'm not hating on it. Now if it's Star Wars, I fucking completely hate on it. But that kind of stuff. But I even enjoy ripping the cards because I'm like, man, this is the artwork, the yep. stuff going on. And then just maybe it's because I'm curious as a person. Like, what makes this? I remember one night me and Manny were like chatting for like 45 minutes trying to tell the difference. Why is this card valuable? And it was just like some very subtle. Uh, like a Chinese character on the side. Yep. Uh, you know, like a lettering combo. And it was like, we were, you know how you have the little magnifying glass where you can zoom yeah. in on the card? Like, what the hell makes this card different from the base? So it, he, it's like where this Marvel was, it had like a SCR or SC or RR. It, and we were like, what's, what's the best? What's the best? Why yes. is this from you and this one's C- SCR? It was fun. It's, it's like, we like to learn, so... So yeah, that's been it's been a blast too because you're definitely having fun. You're enjoying what you're doing, and you're not like stuck because we've talked about this before. I feel like we've each had like little periods where we've been kind of like stuck, and you're paralyzed because you don't want to make the wrong decision. You end up not doing anything, and then you become frustrated because you're like, I'm still in the same damn spot. So for us, one thing that I wanted to talk about is we've recently sold damn near all of our baseball with spring training going. And have just gone ape shit crazy getting into football. Yep. Getting into football, getting into specifically for for me, and this is not a pump, I'm trying to be transparent. So I want to be clear about that is Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and I, I want to talk about something um that to me is a little awkward. I bought a card that I absolutely I don't want to say I don't believe in it. But it made me uncomfortable because I'm buying it so I can be in with the in crowd because I know that it's a card that I see every day in Discord gets scooped up right away. It's everybody thinks is hot, but I've picked up some Jordan Love. And it really makes me, almost makes me a little uncomfortable Mm -hmm. because I'm like, oh, you know what? Aaron Rodgers is going to, is going to say he's coming back. And all of a sudden I've got a card that, you know, right now is, you know, anywhere from, thousand bucks 1200 bucks all of a sudden becomes like a a hundred dollar a hundred dollar card which isn't cool yeah that's the risk of going with the hype um 
especially now. It's weird how his hype is so high right now, even in an off season. How how do you feel about Trey Lance? Like, are you picking up any? Are you going to pick up any Trey Lance? I picked up a little bit of Trey Lance. I do. If it wasn't for uh, his name escapes me, Brock Purdy tearing his elbow, I'm probably not buying Trey Lance. But given how early in the season he got injured, he'll have plenty of time to be healthy. And I would expect going into next season, he's the mm-hmm. he's the the starting quarterback where it's his job to lose. So I've been playing the the quarterback game and then just been diving into football, trading out of baseball when it's high, getting into football when it's low. Knowing that there's the Ship Shawana show, followed by the Chicago Spectacular, which I think we're going to try to get to for a day. I've got a daddy daughter dance on that Saturday night. So, Kaya Bear, Greater Sign, Sports Guards. Mm-hmm. But, but then, you know, with National last year, football was king there. And so, I, I expect as long as none of these guys get hurt, there'll be like some pretty, I don't want to say easy, but some pretty easy opportunity to, you know, to make some coin and then turn around and, get into basketball before it starts and start scooping up, you know, putting some funds away for baseball when it ends. Or just trading the football for your grail because you find everything at the National. And say you want yeah. a Michael Jordan, another auto Michael Jordan, you could easily trade these up-and-coming football players for a Michael Jordan auto. Yeah, and, and so I, I will say this. If we're being um, completely transparent, we we sent our Jordan auto, BGS95, with the uh, – one subgrade of a 10, I think that was centering or edges. Two nine fives in the corner was a nine. Sent it to PSA with the hope of uh, crossover to PSA 10. So cross your fingers for that one. Yep. Uh, and then in regards to like PC items, I've picked up a couple of P wills uh, on PWCC. And I lost one last night live. Mm-hmm. I was bit on the, the Nebula, the Mosaic Nebula one of one. I put in a bid at like eleven hundred and eighty four bucks and somebody won it at twelve hundred. And mm-hmm. so it's a good sign for me because some of the one of ones I picked up have been cons- it, it, it's just a good sign. I like to see that it like that it didn't go for as cheap as I thought it was gonna go for. For sure. And it, you said it was raw, right? It was yeah, raw. it was raw. Okay. That's yep. awesome. That's actually huge for you guys. I do like like that. Um I I I do want to bring up too. We're you could tell Jeremy and I have been like itching to have a uh, kind of show together to tell you guys what we've been doing. I, I want to do a recap of remember I said last show where I, I was picking up Detroit teams, Michigan State teams for this the show in Lansing. Yep. Um. So two weeks prior, I went to we were in Chicago and I my dead set was picking up Michigan State alum, Michigan alum, or Detroit teams. I made a killing, not a killing because. Um, there was cheaper end cards. They were lower end cards, but I actually was moving cards at this, at the show in Lansing. Um, before an hour was into the show, I sold, I probably sold like my bigger cards right away. And it was like, wow, I can't believe I sold it. The Max Scherzer I bought. So I bought a Max Scherzer out of 10 auto RP or it was second year, but it was a relic auto. That got sold. I bought a Jaron Jackson numbered PSA 10. That sold right away. Even my cheap stuff, I bought a couple of Le'Veon Bell autos, rookie auto relics, and those went fast because I knew Lansing, there's a lot of Michigan State fans that want to collect, you know, Le'Veon Bell. So I did pretty well. So I think I'm going to fo- – it made me happy because I wasn't doing good on uh, Michigan players, which is all right with my, me. I would take the loss on that. But now I realize that these at this Lansing show, we need to get Michigan State play, uh, alumni players in their unis or at uh, in their Michigan State. I don't know how many player people came and asked you, but I got like at least ten or eleven people that asked for Kenneth Walker autos. And I hooked you up with one at the beginning yeah, of the did. show, didn't yeah. I? I did. You did, and I I showed one of the people that was like dead set. He had Michigan State all over, and he was like, oh, "How much is it? Not for sale." <laughs> yep, it was. Uh... I was happy because it's like one of those things that in theory it sounds good. And then when you actually do it and see it come to fruition, it's a badass feeling. You're like, Oh shit. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. That was easy. You were at a show where these people meant nothing to these people where I'm sure they're like, just take it off my hands. And you brought it back to like the hotbed where everybody's looking for these specific players. 
Yeah. Well, how many people asked you when I was gone about Kelvin Johnson? That oh, yeah. uh, game used uh, Kelvin Johnson. That sold because mm-hmm. inst- there was people fighting for it. One guy heard that they wanted it, and he was like, I buy it. Like, because he heard the other guy interested. It it was fun. I Even the Rick, what is it? You you said the last name. Is it Mahorn? Yeah. So Rick Mahorn, I've never heard of him. I'm not a Detroit Pistons guy. Before my time, I think. Um, but it was an auto, numbered auto. That went – as well, I was actually shocked that went, but because that was a throw-in for one of my deals. That was, I am telling you, that stuff moves so easy, and now you've got the ability where you know that if you're going somewhere, you you can look for yeah. stuff, or if you know, and that's that kind of like the theory why I ever bought that. You know, I had this Donovan Mitchell in flight out of thirty-five auto is like, I know we're going to Cleveland, mm-hmm. and I know Donovan Mitchell is hot in Cleveland. Okay, yeah. cool. Let me scoop it up. So just being mindful of that. And now with Courtney going to Dallas, you better believe that if there's some cowboy stuff, which I never look at, but if I can scoop up like, you know, maybe some CD Lamb or Micah Parsons or maybe, you know, like some Luca or maybe even Kyrie now. Maybe there's some Mavs fans that want Kyrie and then just arm her with a little bit of ammo when she's at Dallas. Might make for just like easy, nothing crazy, but if you can take 10 into 20, 20 into 40, and you did significantly better than that, mm-hmm. why not? Exactly. Why not? I mean, I was at the Lansing show looking for uh, Colts players. I I was – it's just dead set. And I was also – here's another thing. Look for people – like, you know some of the vendors when you go. We I know Card Collector, too. Everyone knows him. Good Big guy on for the influencer, right? Everyone knows he collects PCs. Ohio State. There was people coming up to me at Ohio State where I almost bought it to sell to him for his shop. Like, you got to <laughs> think outside the box like that kind of stuff. And I'm starting to realize it. I think Jeremy's proud of me because I never would have thought of that last year. Think outside the box. There you go. And that's why it's important to take those those little singles and build that bankroll because then it gives you some flexibility to try some of these things out. And are they all going to work? No. No. But – when you have a theory and you you bring it to life, that is a badass, badass feeling because you're moving in a space successfully. And then like your hobby money starts maintaining itself or sustaining itself. And you're able to use that money to get whatever it is your heart desires. I almost did a trade where it was a CJ Stroud, Ohio State auto for some Michigan State cards, but it never, we kind of never reached a deal. But my back of my mind was like, I'm getting, taking this card and it's going right to, Ryan at the show and selling it to him. Yeah. No, so. I, I think it's, I think it's been awesome. So like the one thing I would say is like, if you were to look in my Zion case and your Zion case, other than for you, you still have a few big cards, which I think are like, you know, Mbappe is a great hold. Like if you don't sell it, not a big deal. And then your name are one of one, but there's been a lot of, a lot of churn, a lot of different yeah. cards in there. And mine is completely different. Like today I bought a, a a pretty sizable Justin Fields lot. I think there's six or seven slabs, all of them numbered, all of them PSA nine or 10. I bought the entire lot. I bought, uh, I was buying some stuff off of discord yesterday. I picked up a Matt Jones from Jojo sports cards today. I, I have some. And so I've like completely turned my inventory over. And I remember, you know, I've said this before, but uh, like somebody said, like, you, you like like we talk about the Troy show and why sometimes like you go, it's the same stuff. Well, I might think that my stuff is fire, but if I carry the same stuff, people are looking at my table the same way. So I want to know that if, Hey, reckless and Manny are showing up, you've got to go check that out. Cause God knows what's going to be in there. Well, yeah, we even had people come up and I heard them. They were like, do you guys do everything? Cause we had Courtney had some stranger thing, Pixar. I had some soccer TCG and you had the football, basketball, and ba- uh, some baseball that you were selling as well. So we so- had everything. soccer, TCG, the whole shebang, man. Yeah, we had everything covered. Like anybody that wanted to buy cars, we pretty much had covered. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, the last couple of weeks, and I feel like I've honed my craft. Like I always, like I judge myself and I'm always like, there's little things that I can do better. So this past show, I had like a pretty healthy bankroll. And in the past, I would feel like an obligation to go spend it. 
got to, like, it would be the worst thing ever would be to come home from a show without, you know, shooting your wad. And so this show, I was like, you know what? Cash is king. There's always going to be another show. There's always going to be a deal on Discord. Let's just be mindful. And so I made sure not only to buy players that I know I either like and or are coveted in the space right now, but also the brands. The mm-hmm. brands. I had some pretty cool stuff walk up to the table. It was like serial numbered and short printed. But if it was like certified for football, like eh, I'm probably not going to pay a premium. Now, if somebody wants to just give it away, gladly I'll take it. So it was kind of cool to just like practice that and feel like, okay, I'm becoming sharper. And then one thing that I was really proud of is like, I like to get a card and go home with it. And then I thought like, well, if I'm going to just sell it next week anyway, if somebody wants to buy it right now, why not take my money? So there was cards I didn't even get pictures of because if somebody came up and wanted to, you know, I bought it for 200 and they want to pay me 250. Sure. Take yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Take it. Yeah. It was, I mean, we are on a, like, as you could tell on a high together um, with the hobby right now. So I don't like when I don't want to hear anybody's like down and gloomy about the hobby because it's really good. Go to shows, go to shows. They're fun. Yeah. Get out there and talk to people. And even if you're like a quiet person, do like I do, man. Just go like I am. I'm pretty like in public where I don't know people pretty damn quiet. So I, I walk the show. I'll do 10 laps and I'll like I'll throw out like, hey, how are you? Like, I'm always very courteous. And then I see who engages and then who I feel comfortable with. And then I talk to them and I, I'm looking at their table. And you can always tell, like, there will always be the, hey, this is only my second time setting up. If something's out of whack, just tell me. I'm, I'm willing to deal. Hey, like, and I'm like, okay, this is somebody I can deal with. As opposed to the guy that you went to where you're like, hey, I'm willing to pay even more than eBay comps. But then he basically told you to F off. Yeah. Like, those those people I never – I will never do a deal with. Yeah, it, it's bad. And like you said, not only are we like making transactions, moving in, in some inventory, uh, selling some inventory, we are building something big here at Too Thick and meeting so many great people. The amount of people that come up and said we they love our content was like humbling. Like I loved it. Like it made me want to do more episodes. I know Jeremy's really busy, so I didn't tell him, but I'm like, Jeremy, we got to, like, do some more content. Like, I'm excited. I'm excited for Vegas. We're going to be on the strip doing content. Um, We got to be careful with that type of content, but we're going to do some well, content. Yeah, here's the thing. We talk about doing content, and then it's like the show's over, and, like, what content did you get? And you're like, oh, nothing. How about you? Nothing. Court? Okay, Court, I need you to put something together so we have some content. I, so I have like a couple videos from the show this weekend that I have to give to Courtney so she can mash it up. So we do have something. <laughs> yeah. No. And I, I would say too, that what what's cool is, is Manny married with children where it's a full-time job. Like, as I alluded to, or I mentioned at the beginning of the show, like up since four o'clock this morning out being a damn hero. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> to restoring power. To the Michiganders, working your tail off, putting your kids to bed, exercising, trying to be a husband, and then jumping on, drinking Red Bull to keep yourself awake. We truly, like, you don't do that unless you love what you're doing. Because mind you, nobody's paid us a damn penny yet. And I'm trying to get those bucks, man. I say that kind of like tongue in cheek because when the opportunities present themselves, I'm automatically like, nah. That's not for us. That's nah. Exactly like, there goes our credibility. Nah. Exactly. <laughs> but I will tell you, I will tell you, when anybody sends us a DM, leaves a comment, emails us, like the email is always crazy because I don't really check that email the way I check every other email. And there's just like an email from somebody that's like, hey, I learned this. And I'm like, are you, yep. are you listening to the right, are you listening to the right podcast? I think you got the wrong one, dude. It's, yes. it's just all so badass. Shout out like to Denny Cards, um, Joseph Boyer. Uh, these guys all are reaching out. James Lumid. I'm getting DMs like daily now saying, oh, our card journey. Um, shout out to all these guys because they're DMing me saying how much they love our content. Yep. And I, I will say this. It, it, it is awesome. And we're always open to suggestions. So if there's something that we're missing that we're not talking on, our intent is to try to touch on everything that's going on mm-hmm. and not at all. Like, so if there's something that you'd like us to chat out, chat about or bring up, 
don't hesitate to reach out. One thing I did want to say since we're like kind of like this cathartic release all over yeah, our, yeah, our yeah. the the, the Thickalo's face yeah, just, is okay. we we have these boxes that are like this is the little guy. This is just like your standard two row. We've got the big five rows and four rows. You probably have about right now out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, like probably about thirty of them out filled with cards. We're bringing them to Ship Shawana to absolutely get rid of. Really? To get rid of. Oh wow! I have found. I, I have found. Well, there's so much money to be made in dollar boxes. I just I don't have the time to do it, and the stress and strain, the anxiety I put on myself to make sure a dollar box is prepared is just not worth it. So we are trying to consolidate in like in a perfect world, it would be just like one Zion case, whether it's a three row or a five row with enough stuff to fill one or two showcases and then just keep it like that. It makes it easier to manage. It makes the show prep that much easier. It makes carrying in and out of that much easier. And even though I would love to just like rock dollar boxes, because I mean, I can't tell you how many times where I've tried to sell a dollar box for like, Hey, Somebody take it for 75 bucks. There's tons of stuff in it. I do $250 at the day to show and I still have a half a box. Now, these, I'm not saying that's what there's all in there. There's going to be some base stuff and some common stuff. But for us, the way we're functioning, we were playing in that pool. And now we've decided for us, we're going to play in a different pool. And so I'm excited to, to share that journey. Let's go. go. Let's go. And you're going to you're gonna kill this, this new journey. I know it. So... I had only a lot because of I'm surrounded by my guy, Tommy Sweat. Sweat that drank like a 32 ounce Red Bull. I'm wired, as you could tell on this episode. <laughs> That's spectacular. Yeah. So what do you what do you got what do you got planned? What's the goal for in Shipshawana? Like personally, from like a card perspective, not too thick, not relationship, just like from cards. What would you like to get out of this show? I would like to, I'm actually going there to buy. So I would like to, uh, I haven't been able to, and this is if we have help, I haven't been able to really walk the show like I did Skyline. I kind of want to do that. I felt like I was very successful when I was like patient, looking at every card, talking to every dealer, instead of doing a quick walk through, just looking at showcases. Because the actual value I'm learning is in those boxes that you don't yep. see. Um, and that's where the cards that are like the MSU alumni, that's where you find the Le'Veon Bells. That's where you find the people that people PC. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, that's what I hope to do. Um, get some cards graded. I'm going to probably try to buy some cards that I think I could send to TNT because TNT is doing, they're doing pickup there. So if I can get that opportunity, I'm going to do that. I think, I think that's awesome. And I'm hopeful too. That with, uh, you know, all of us there, we should be able to manage so you can get out. Because I have never once, once walked the ship you want to show. Now, yeah. I've stopped and looked at tables in the morning while we're setting up. And I've also, like, you know, I'll, I'll stop and spend a minute or two at a table after going to the bathroom or when I go up to that main place to grab a drink. Otherwise, I've never walked it either. And I would love to have the ability to go and spend a day doing yeah. like we do, very methodical, talk to everybody. If there's a home run, grab it in the morning and then kind of lay the seeds and just, you know, whatever deal towards the end of the day makes the most sense, jump all over it. Exactly. Because, like, in, in behind the table, you have a – you buy, like, a lot. So you don't find the need to go walk sometimes because you're like, I'm getting deals at, at the table and that's where you yeah. find them. But there are some deals to be made at Ship because people are priced to sell right now. And I love it. You know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful – just like I do, a majority, not all, but I think a majority of the cards that we will bring will be priced to sell. I will be at or below eBay comps. Now, there's going to be a couple. Like, if it's like a, a Justin Fields white sparkle numbered out of, you know, whatever, less than 25, I'm going to part. I might be a little bit like, you know, because if the last sale is like a week ago, well, I know I could just hold it for a couple more months. And so it won't be anything outlandish, but the intent is to go sell, man, to go sell. I've made my money. Yeah. I have you. You make your money on the buy, so like, let's do it. Let's get cash. Let's. I too. Um, the one thing that you know dawned on me like a week or two as we were taking this new journey is like there still needs to be an opportunity to buy raw cards because I do like the raw, you know, grade flip mm -hmm. thing. But if I'm only buying like mid to high end, and by high end I mean like a thousand bucks, I'm not at all yeah. like one of those guys. <laughs> if I'm only playing that game, like 
that well could run dry. And I, I like having the raw stuff to continue to grade. So, you know, once every few weeks I've got an order popping, it'll give me something new to play with. It's funny because if you think about it, you're going into the world where I was trying to go to, and I'm going into the world where you were good at. So yeah. we're kind of like reversing uh, like what we're doing and it's actually kind of fun. Well, because I, I just, I stress out. And even if everything's perfect, I'm going to find a million reasons why things are wrong. So I'm like, how can I alleviate that stress? And now that we've made the commitment to do the Avery Schubach show once a month, how do I do that? I'm like, if I have to do the Ship Shawana setup every single time, like at that point, I wouldn't even want to do shows anymore. Yeah. Right. Because this is truly hobby. And I'm like, well, I'm already stressed and filled with anxiety for my job and being a good husband and taking care of my kids. I like at that point, it's not worth it. So taking a Zion case where I can put on a podcast or listen to some music and quickly grade everything in like 20 minutes, that's not a big deal. Yep. So for me, that's just, you know, that's like an internal looking in the mirror reflection, blah, 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 sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So if you're listening, bring Jeremy rare Patrick Williams. If you have it at ship Shawana. Dude. Dude. If you have that nebula, <laughs> that he was <laughs> come to ship Shawana. You know, there's probably people that are bidding on Patrick Williams because they know you want it. I bet there's people out there. I, I've thought about that. I know I get we get a lot of DMs and it. it's 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 very flattering that like people know us as the P Will guys. But like, there's somebody like they'll hit us with like a Don Ross PSA eight and try to sell it to me for like eight hundred dollars and it's like so and so said you collect P Will and you'll pay out the I'm like I'm, I love P Will but I'm not I'm not an asshole I'm not an idiot yeah I mean I'm an idiot but not like that much of an idiot <laughs> yeah it's it's fun it's fun though because like like you said. All in all, they know that you're the P. Will guys. It's cool to be the P. Will guys. Yeah, did, did I tell you? I just recently found that on Christmas Day, and I and and I know how it happened, but it's mind. It, it pisses me off. A one of one optic contenders on card auto of P. Will ended for like a thousand bucks. Oh. <laughs> And then that nebula went for the same price, pretty much. No, the nebula went for like twelve hundred. Oh, geez. one was great. One was graded. One was raw. And I don't know. I, I know because it was like cr- company Christmas party, and then like you know at the eighteenth, nineteenth, we're shut down for the rest of the year, getting ready for vacation, doing the whole holiday thing. And I'm like, you know, coming off the high of the logo, man, I got complacent in my searches, and somehow that thing slipped through the cracks. Well, and I think it's a good. I think it's a golden employee who has it too. Oh, really? Well, you better get mm-hmm. it. Bro. You better check those <laughs> auctions. <laughs> That's funny. Gotta keep an eye on him. Before we go, did you did you see the random Santa Claus cards that are going insane right now from, uh, what is it, Top? Is it Tops or Optic? Are, are they, they're downtowns, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Downtown Santa. How, they're selling for, like, a lot of money, but I'd be ticked if I got that Santa if it wasn't actually selling on the resale that much yeah yeah i mean exactly like the fact that somebody's willing to pay for that is is crazy to me unless it's like super scarce and it's one of those things you just want to have it to say that you have something that somebody else doesn't have otherwise the appeal of a santa claus card is like it's it's like the appeal of watching a star wars movie no thank you hard pass i'm like what is what is this i first saw it i was like i cannot believe my eyes that people are getting excited about these Santa Claus cards. Yeah. So before we get out of here, if you're coming to Ship Shawana, make sure you hit us up. We're going to be staying at, it's a Hilton proper, property in Middlebury. We usually, after trade night at Ship Shawana, it's like 10, 15 minutes away. We go there. The, the kids have a couple of drinks. We rip some wax and we chop it up. And it's kind of been like a, a unofficial after party to the trade night. So we'll be there. We'll be, you know, ripping some wax. I asked Court to pick me up a, a box of Top's Finest Bundesliga. Mm. So I think that's what I'm going to be ripping uh, Friday night. Manny, I'm sure I'll have something to rip. We're going to be ripping some more Disney. So if you're coming through, come through, say what up. Come say hi, man. Chop it up. Maybe Manny will give you 50% off on all of his cards. Pretty much. <laughs> and, and we should do something if somebody were to, like, scream meat sticks and tummy sweats. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. should get – you know, we need to, when we do, because we did talk about doing merch, that would be like the code word for like a free shirt. They call us by tummy sweats or meat sticks. 
Yes. We do I could I could see it like you you buy a shirt, you get the you get the size, right? Yeah. But then you don't know what you're getting. And so like you could get like the meat sticks two of seven. Yes. Like a limited a limited drop. And you know what I mean? And like you got the parallel shirt where it's like the the, the thick a low red, but you get like the thick a low blue, so you got the blue shimmer. Yeah. What maybe it's numbered, maybe you get the auto. Let's do that. There's something let's, there. Let's, let's let's cook, man. Let's cook. Our our two our two thick mystery packs <laughs> merch. There you go, man. So like make sure that. you like, subscribe, smash, as the kids would say, smash the buttons, share with everybody. Um, you know, get your mom involved. Bring your mom over to my way. I'll I'll, I'll show her a good time. Yep, yep. In the hobby, as will Manny. Yep. <laughs> and with the- that, with that. I hope you guys. I what? hope because this was what? our best. This was our best episode. What? I, I hope what? you enjoyed your hobby release, your AKA, your bukkake from this episode. <laughs> and Jeremy, well, do you want to do the outro in your your uh, Steve Austin? No, I, I can't top sports card bukkake all over your face. So, <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I hope. You guys had a good time, and we'll talk soon. Peace.